So I'm Joanne and I'm part of Freedom Cups, which is a, a company that two of my other sisters also co-founded with me, Vanessa and Becky, which some of you have actually met during Cohort 2. Okay, So I'm part of Cohort 3 and my two other sisters are part of co Cohort 2. So Freedom Cups, yes, we distribute menstrual cups. Okay, So let me just tell you a bit more about menstrual cups and how we actually started on this. My older sister is the, is the practical one. Well, she knew about menstrual cups and she said, okay, the, the pros outweighs the cons, so I'm going to try it. I was the more hesitant one. I was like, no, I'm not going to be inserting anything inside. No, no, I'll stick to my pets. It is so, I mean, it's just the easiest option to me. So I was like, nah, I'm not going to. So my sister started it and she was raving on and on. I was just like, no, still not going to try. No, sorry. And then after that, my younger sister first initially was like, nah, why should I, right? So we all went for a family holiday on St. John's Island, which is an offshore island near Singapore. And then my younger sister, the smart one, who was on her period, forgot to bring any pets along. So what did she use? She was like, oh no, what am I going to use? And the only thing we had was a menstrual cup. So my younger sister was the next one who decided to try it because she had no choice. It was either that or a cloth. And I guess you would choose a menstrual cup. So she was stuck in the toilet screaming and trying to insert a menstrual cup. <laughs> and I was just laughing out there. I was like, hi, you fool. Okay, your turn. And then after that, a month later, it was my turn. And I was still like, ah, nah. Nah, I'm not going to use it again. I was actually the fool. So what happened was, I was on my period and I was just like, uh, where are the pets? And there are no pets in my house. Absolutely zero pets in my house. So I was forced to use a menstrual cup. It's either that or I go out with my bleeding self and go to the nearest shop and get a, a pet or, pen, or pets. So I was like, nah, okay, that's not very wise either, right? So I'm just going to try the menstrual cup. So the next 30 minutes, I was in the toilet moaning. Okay, sorry, wrong, wrong. <laughs> Wrong, wrong word choice here. Not moaning, not grunting, sorry, wrong channel. But <laughs> I was screaming vulgarities and like, what the hell is this? And I was, after a while, actually, the first 30 minutes, yeah, I was hell trying to figure out how to insert it because I transitioned from pets directly to something I'm going to insert. So, yeah, it was hell. But after that, the next two years was the best time of my life. Like... Sada. Yeah. Thanks, Sonia. Thank you. My number one fan is Sonia right now. <laughs> yeah, so honestly, I dived with it with a tank full of sharks. So, yep, and nothing happened to me. I'm still alive here. So that's how much I trust it, basically. Okay. So that's how I started using the menstrual cup. Now, for every woman in this world, um, for every woman in this room right now who's seated here, I think you know exactly what I'm talking about when I say that sometimes being on your period is tough. Like during this welcome week, there was one girl who came up to me and said, "Man, I'm on my period," and I was just like, "Oh man, that's gotta suck. Like you're on a t you're living in a tent, your tent almost flew away, and now you're on your period. Oh man." <laughs> Poor thing, okay? And for every guy in this room, it's not time for you to take a break. In fact, you should be sitting up and listening to me right now because this is what your girlfriends go through, this is what your wives go through, this is what your mothers went through, this is what your sisters went through, so you got to be listening, okay? <laughs> so, let me tell you more about the woman we've met, okay? So, this is Ganita Lamo. She's from a nomadic hill tribe in Ladakh. And she uses old cloth to when she's on her period because she has no access to proper sanitary products. Now, due to the stigma that still surrounds menstrual, uh, that still surrounds periods, she can't dry out this cloth out in the open. So basically, she leaves it in her room, which is dark and sometimes damp, which then causes recurring yeast and fungal infections for her. This is Anne Marie from Philippines, and she works on a sugarcane plantation. Now, on a plantation, there are no toilets that you can just run to to change a pet, okay? And she doesn't have ample supplies of pets, so when she has a period, basically, she doesn't go to work because that is the only solution she has. She doesn't go to work. And for us, missing one week of work is no big deal. For example, I miss one week of work to be here, 
And what did I get? I got a flight to New Zealand. I got to meet cows and sheep. And I had the best food of my life. And I still get income. So really, it's not a big deal. I missed one week of work. So what? And I basically had the best one week of my life. So yeah. But for her, missing one week of work actually means no income and no food on the table for her family. So there's a stark contrast. Then, another problem we actually witnessed while we were there is when they had their periods and how they disposed your sanitary napkins or cloth is basically they buried in the earth. And after they buried it in the earth, these dogs around actually dig it up again and they start carrying these pads around in their mouth to show the rest of the village. So it's just an extremely embarrassing for them. I mean, can you imagine your dog parading your pet around? I mean, well, that's not very nice, right? But that's how it is in the Philippines. Here you have Patin, okay? And she is from a boarding school in Nepal. She also uses old cloth, but she is shy to dry out in the open because you still have boys in the school compound. So she can dry out her old cloth. On top of that, her parents are farmers. So now pets become an additional expense for them every month. But she has it good because her mothers and grandmothers were actually banished to a menstrual hut while they were on their periods. So they're not allowed to eat with their family. They're not allowed to sit with their family. They're basically in a menstrual hut. Now, this is Sarah and she's from Singapore. She takes part in triathlons and marathons. And when she has a period, and it coincides with a triathlon and marathon, she pops in pills just to push her period back. And when she pops in pills, it actually affects her hormones. And it affects the rest of her period cycles. So that invites another slew of problems. So what exactly is the problem? I spoke about four women. But this problem does not affect four women. In fact, it affects 70% of women across the globe who do not have any access to any form of sanitary products. For the women who are sitting in this room right now, yes, your period is tough. But can you imagine not having any form of sanitation or any form of sanitary products? That makes it hell. Your period is hell for you when you do not have any form of sanitary products. I mean, I honestly cannot even begin to imagine using bark or leaves or cloth for my period. For me, if I don't bring my period, I mean, if I don't bring my cup around, I just use tissue and it's not, it's not a big deal. But using bark and rags and leaves, that is really hell. Yeah. Now, for the ones who do have access to sanitary products, we experience discomfort, you experience leaks, you are limited in the forms of your mobility. Sometimes your cramps are so bad that you just end up laying in bed the whole day, whining and whining. And all you want is a cup of Milo. And you know, if a boy comes near you, be like, get away from me. Yes. So that's what happens. And an estimated of 23% of the girls who go to school end up dropping out of school when their first periods hit. So what is our solution to this? Well, basically, it's a menstrual cup. And these are some of the benefits that outline a menstrual cup. It is inexpensive. It's reusable. One cup lasts up to 15 years. It is leak-free. It is made of medical-grade silicon, which is the same thing that goes into heart transplants. So your body has no adverse reaction to it. It is sanitary and it's eco-friendly. So let me go into a bit of that. Number one. It is good for our planet. Why? It makes it the best option for the Earth. Because for every woman who swaps to a cup, we will be saving the Earth 12,000 pets. And your pets and tampons are non-biodegradable. What does this mean? Well, your, grand your mother's pets are lying in some landfill somewhere. Your grandmother's pets are lying in a landfill somewhere. Your great-grandmother's pets are lying in a landfill somewhere. Your great-great-grandmother's pets are lying in a landfill somewhere. I'm sure you get the point. Now, one cup lasts up to 10 years on average. 
And so you won't need to be paying for pads and tampons. I switched to this three years ago, and I've not bought a single pad or tampon ever since. So, you, so you're essentially saving quite a bit of money. Next, it is also good for your body. As mentioned, it's made of medical-grade silicon. Your pads and tampons are lined with chemicals. So sometimes, have you heard, as some of you may have heard, you may experience toxic shock syndrome. So with this, you can leave it in, and your body doesn't react to it in any way. I've left it in for 24 hours because I simply forgot about it. Which is not the best solution either, so don't forget about it. But, yeah, it happens. So one of this cup actually cost $33, which is a fraction of what is being sold out there. We are not out for profits. We just want to distribute it to as many women as we can get our hands on. Now, we work on a buy one, give one model. So for every cup that's purchased, we give one to a woman in need. Yeah. This is our website. And this is some of the media coverage we have received thus far. We are extremely humbled and extremely grateful for it, including EHF. Thank you for choosing us. For the Chinese newspaper, still don't know what they actually talked about. <laughs> still don't know. In terms of our projects, we have done 16 projects up to date in seven different countries, Singapore, Malaysia, Cambodia, Ladakh, Nepal, Philippines, and Nigeria. So the first project that we actually went for was in the Philippines. It was my auntie's village. So that was one of the most memorable ones for us. When we actually first went there, the village chief actually told us that we are only going to give it to the married woman because of the notion of it may break a girl's hymen and therefore in the future the guys may not want them. So we were like, okay, yeah, sure, we will listen to you. But at night actually there's some women who stuck to us and actually asked us for more for their kids, for their girls after they tried it. And we were extremely surprised by that. In fact, when we went to Nigeria, one of the most recent projects, my auntie was like, no, it's not going to work out in Nigeria, no. They are going to say no to you. And these were refugees from the Boko Haram. So they were like, no, they won't use a menstrual cup. So we're like, nah, we're going to still try it. So we decided to try it. And the first question we asked a group full of, uh, we asked this woman were, was, what are y'all using now? And the first woman who actually raised her hand said, a menstrual cup. And we were like, holy shit. We are not prepared for this. Yeah, but, I mean, that's amazing. If a woman who lived through Boko Haram can use a cup, I don't see why people in the first world country are still running away from us. Yeah, and, and this is a true story. We have people still in Singapore, when we talk to them, literally running away from us. They pick, they pick their child up and start running away. Yes, it's, it's quite funny at times, but at the same time, you're like, really, really, guys, why? Yeah. So there's some pictures from our projects and some feedback that we received. So how can we work together? Freedom Cups can be purchased in parcels for the distribution of your CIP projects. So there are some students who go overseas and do CIP projects. And that's when we'll teach you how to educate the woman you're going to be talking to and how you distribute it. Alternatively, you can also uh, pledge a certain number of cups that we will then distribute to the woman. Yeah. On our projects, it's not just about distributing cups. It's also about education because we receive questions like, when we insert it, is it going to come out through our mouth? Yeah. And we were like, nah, that's not going to happen. But it always starts with education. And you'd be surprised because we get the same questions in Singapore as well. We have questions like, uh, so is it going to affect us when we pee? And we're like, no, that's a different hole. Or, will it keep rising and will it get lost? And I'm like, no, that's really not possible if you think about it. How can it get lost in your body? Again, it's really not possible. So, the point is that, you know, it feels like sometimes in Singapore, we are not doing enough to educate our women about their own bodies. There's still a lot of loopholes, although I come from one of the best education systems. But we're not doing enough. Oh, CIP is a community project. So in Singapore, all the students have to do community projects. Yeah. 
Okay, so this is our email. If you want to hook up, go for it. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs>